In this lesson, we'll talk about the law of cosines and its applications. In the previous video, we learned how to solve oblique triangles using the law of sines. However, there are situations where the law of sines can't be used. For example, if we have to solve a triangle with no pair of opposite data given, then we can't use the sine law. This situation happens when either all sides but no angles are given. That's this situation. All sides are given, for example, maybe this is 8, 7, 5, and we need to find angles. Observe that there is not even one pair of opposite data given, so there is no way of applying the sine law. The second situation is when there is one given angle, but this angle is enclosed by two given sides. That looks like this. We may have these two sides given, A and B. Let's say A is 6 and B is 8, with the enclosed angle theta of, for example, 50 degrees. In such situation, again, we don't have even one opposite pair of data. So the sine law doesn't apply. Therefore, we need another tool for solving such triangles. And here it is, the cosine law. How does it work? Let's look again at our triangle. Using the cosine law, we can find the side C that is opposite to angle 50. The formula that we use, it's written here. C square equals A square plus B square. So this side square equals the sum of squares of the two given sides minus double the product of A and B, these two sides, times cosine of the enclosed angle C. On our diagram, the angle C is also called theta, so that's the same angle. Notice that this formula has something to do with Pythagorean equation. The cosine law is actually an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. Here's the connection. Pretend that the angle C is actually 90 degrees. So what's cosine of 90 degrees? You can probably recall that that's zero. If not, Please enter to your calculator cosine of 90 degrees, it is zero. So if this enclosed angle is actually a right angle, this expression nihilates, it disappears because it's zero, right? So the cosine law really end up to be the Pythagorean equation. C square equals A square plus B square. Seeing this connection may help us to remember this formula because it's pretty long. However, we can start writing this formula like we would normally write the Pythagorean equation, and then, since we know that our enclosed angle is not 90 degrees, we just need to remember to subtract the expression double the product of the two given sides times the cosine of the enclosed angle. Notice that the cosine law can be written in different versions. It depends which side of the triangle we will start with as sort of pretended hypotenuse. In the stop equation, C is opposite to the given angle, so we start writing the equation as if C would be our hypotenuse. However, if A and C is given and we are looking for B, the B side will take the role of kind of a hypotenuse, right? And similarly, if we have given B and C and the angle between them, we can set up this formula to find A by pretending that A is our hypotenuse, Therefore, a square would be equal to b square plus c square minus double the product of our two sides times cosine of the angle enclosed by b and c. Okay, let's see how this works. Solve the triangle ABC if a is given, b is given, and c is given. Let's place this data on the diagram. a is 5, b is 7, and c is 10. We need to find those angles, angle A, B, and C. One remark here, since it's easier to use the sine law, because the formulas are easier to work with, right? We should use the cosine law only when it's absolutely necessary. That means when it's not possible to use the sine law. Also, when using the cosine law, start with the largest angle first. This is because when we try to find an angle, Using the inverse sine function, the calculator will always give us the acute angle, while the inverse cosine function returns any angle from 0 to 180 degrees. 
So if we are after an obtuse angle, it's safer to use the cosine law. OK, we know that the largest angle is across the longest side. So we are going to solve for angle C first. Let's set up the cosine law, thinking of C as of a hypotenuse. So pretending that our angle C is a right angle, we would write C square equals A square plus B square. That would be the Pythagorean equation. But since the angle C is not necessarily a right angle, we need to subtract two times the product of the two sides that we took times cosine of the angle C. Okay. And now our goal is to find angle C. That means leave the cosine of angle C on one side and move everything else to the other side. OK, let's plug in all the data. So C is 10. We have 10 squared, which is 100. Let's bring the A squared and B squared to the left. So we have minus A squared, so it's 25, and minus B squared, which is 49 equals negative 2 times a, which is 5, and times b, which is 7, times cosine of angle c. Now, 100 minus 25 and minus 49 gives us 26, and since we want to leave the cosine of angle c by itself, we're going to divide by this coefficient, which is negative 70. To find angle c, we need to use inverse cosine function of that number. So angle C using a calculator turns out to be approximately 111.8 degrees. OK, let's record this angle on the diagram. 111.8 degrees. And now we can look for some other angles. For example, angle B. But this time we don't need to use cosine law anymore because one pair of data is already given, right? We have an angle, an opposite side. So we can use sine law using this pair, and that's the other pair of our interest. So we can set up the sine law proportion, sine of angle B over 7 equals sine of angle C, which is 111.8, over 10. And now we want to leave sine of angle B, because that's the unknown on one side. Therefore, we multiply across 7 times sine of 111.8 degrees over 10. So to find angle B, we calculate 7 times sine of the angle 111.8 divided by 10. That will be the value of sine of angle B. In order to get angle by itself, we need to use inverse sine, so second function sine of that number. Instead of rewriting this number, we can use this feature second answer. OK, this equals approximately 40.5 degrees. Great, so what's left to do is to find angle A. Angle A is 180 degrees minus 111.8 and minus 40.5. That gives us 27.7 degrees. And the triangle is solved because we have angle A, angle B, and angle C. At this moment, it's a good idea to check if those values make sense. The largest angle, which is 111.8, should be across the longest side, and yes, it is. The smallest angle, 27.7, should be across the shortest side, which is 5. So everything looks OK. Let's see another question. This time we need to solve a triangle. We've given two sides and one angle, but the angle is really enclosed by these two sides. OK, let's try to draw a triangle that will approximately match these data. Angle B is an obtuse angle, so let's draw it somehow like this. That will be our angle B, and this angle is 110 degrees. We don't know side B, we do know side A, it's 20, so it's a little bit shorter than side C, which is 35. 
So that will be our site A, therefore this will be vertex A, and that one will be 35, and that will be our vertex C. Okay, here it's our triangle. So what we need to find is the site B, and then angle A and angle C. Since we can't use the sine law, because we don't have any pair of opposite data, then we are going to use the cosine law, starting with the side B as pretended hypotenuse. B square equals this side square plus that side square, right? So 20 square plus 35 square minus double the product of the two sides, 2 times 20 times 35, times cosine of the enclosed angle, which is 110 degrees. And we are solving for B. Okay, so basically what we need to do is enter the entire expression to a calculator and then take the square root of the obtained answer. So let's see how this works on our graphing calculator. 20 square plus 35 square minus 2 times 20 times 35 and times cosine of 110 bracket. Enter. That will be our radicand. So under the radical sign, we ended up with 2103.8, which gives us approximately, let's take square root of the answer, so second answer, so we don't have to rewrite this number anymore, right? Enter. That gives us approximately 45.9. So we have the side B. And now, since we already know the B, we have one pair of opposite data given. Therefore, we can apply sine law to find either angle A or angle C. Let's try angle C, for example. Sine of angle C over the site 35 equals sine of 110 degrees, this one, over the site B, which is 45.9. And now let's solve for angle C. So sine of angle C equals 35 sine of 110 degrees over 45.9. And using our calculator, we should end up with approximately 0.7165 when rounded to four decimal places, which gives us angle C. Now we use inverse sine of that number or the number displayed on the screen of our calculator. So angle C is approximately 45.8 degrees. Finally, to find angle A, which should be the smallest, we calculate 180 minus the other two angles, minus 110 and minus 45.8. That gives us 24.2 degrees. And yes, we have all the unknown quantities found. So the triangle is solved. Finally, we'll do one application problem. Many trigonometric word problems refer to direction or bearing. Let's talk about direction. Direction of alpha degrees is really the terminal site of the clockwise angle of alpha degrees that starts from the north direction. For example, on this diagram, the point B is in direction of 100 degrees from point A. This terminology is used in navigation. So, if this is point A, to describe the position of point B, we can say that B can be seen from point A in the direction of 100 degrees. Here we have an application problem that uses directions. Two planes leave an airport at the same time and fly for two hours. Plane A flies in the direction of 125 degrees. Remember, to find the direction ray, we always start from the north and rotate clockwise. So plane A flies in the direction of 125 degrees at the speed of 425 kilometers per hour. And plane B flies in the direction of 230 degrees 
at the speed of 450 km per hour. How far apart are they at this time? Okay, so the two planes fly for two hours. They leave the same airport, so they start from the same point. Let's call this point, well, maybe S, for start. Plane A flies in the direction of 125 degrees. So starting from S, let's draw the north direction, this one. And let's make a rotation of 125 degrees, which is more than 90, so approximately here. And then we'll draw the terminal, somewhere here. That's the pathway of plane A. After two hours, plane A is, let's say, here. What is this distance? Well, this distance will be rate times time, right? Since the rate of the first plane is 425, and we multiply it by two hours, this distance is 850 kilometers. Okay, here we have 850 kilometers. Now, plane B flies in the direction of 230 degrees. So, again, starting from north, we open this angle by 230 degrees. So, it's more than 180, but less than 270. Okay, somewhere here. Let's say that's the terminal. This green angle from here to there, it's 230 degrees. And the blue angle was 125 degrees. Okay, so after two hours, plane B is, let's say, here. What is the distance covered by plane B? Well, again, rate times time, so this time it is 450 times 2, which is 900 kilometers. That's the distance of plane B, this one, right? And now the question is, how far apart are they at this time? So we're really looking for this distance AB. Let's denote it by a small s, okay? What do we have here? We have two sides given. It would be nice to have this enclosed angle given. Do we have it? Well, yes, we can find it. The red angle from here to there is the same as the green angle minus the blue angle, isn't it? So this red angle, angle s, it is 230 minus 125, which is 105 degrees. Okay, let's mark it here. Now we have two sides and an enclosed angle. Therefore, we can use the cosine law. Okay, starting with S as our pretended hypotenuse, so we can recall how to set up this cosine law, we'll have S square equals 900 square plus 850 square so far, we have the Pythagorean equation, right? But since the angle is not 90 degrees, we need to subtract double the product of 900 times 850 times cosine of the enclosed angle. So cosine of 105 degrees. And S by itself will be square root of all this expression. Again, let's use our calculator. We have 900 square plus 850 square minus 2 times 900 times 850 times cosine of 105 degrees. Okay, that will be our radicant. It's pretty large, but I'm going to write it just in case someone uses different calculator and want to double check this number. So it's approximately this much. And the final answer turns out to be approximately second root of the answer, 1388.7. So approximately 1389 kilometers. That's in kilometers, right? Okay, let's give the formal answer. The two planes are approximately 1389 kilometers apart after two hours. So now it's your turn. Take some questions from the textbook and practice applying the cosine law.